Hi guys, welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. Today, we're having a little blood oath. Pack seven. This one is partially finished in Sauterne barrels. So this is a blend of 14 year old bourbon, eight year old bourbon, and eight year old bourbon that was finished in Sauterne. So, only, and they don't give us the proportions, but only part of this bourbon, this blend, was aged in sauter. So, you know, they says on there, finished in sauter and barrels, on the packaging, on the box, but that, I mean, that led me to believe that all of it was finished in sauter uh, when I first heard about this release. But then once I saw the packaging pictures and saw some other people talk about it, I realized that only part of this is finished in sauter. Does that matter? I don't know. We're about to find out. You know, it, it says very clearly on the label that a 14 year old that evokes decadent caramel, chocolate, and oak notes. A second eight year old that comes forward with hints of butterscotch and sweet apricots. And then finally an eight year old that has been mellowed in sauterne wine casks from the Bordeaux region of France, delivering a subtle sweetness with depth and spice. Ooh, fancy. So, let's find out. This is a fresh crack. I have to say, this is the best blood oath cork yet. The other wedge corks, I did not like those. So this is a real cork uh, with a nice wood topper. I like that improvement. I love the blue. The bottle is absolutely gorgeous. I am thrilled to have one in the collection. The uh, I don't have any of the other ones. I had a couple, drank them, they're gone. My buddy has a couple and uh, still sitting on his shelf that he's just barely nursing. So. I'll probably go over to his house one day next week and we'll compare this to the others and see how it stacks up. But for today, we're going to review this bad boy. Sit. Let's do it. Interestingly enough, on the nose, the prominent note that I'm getting is peanut butter. I'm getting primarily peanut butter. Maybe a hint of jelly. Maybe this is a PB&J sandwich. There's not a lot going on on the nose. I'm getting a little bit of oak. I have to work my way past <clears throat> some of the prominent notes and try to dig around and, and see what those other notes are, are giving me. It's I'm starting to get a little more of the fruitiness that I'm calling jelly. hint of that grapiness from the sauterne. I'm, I'm starting to pick that up a little bit. There's a very light oak influence. It's, uh, it's not predominant. It's not jumping out. It's very delicate. Very delicate notes, very subtle notes. Hints of butterscotch, hints of brown sugar, hints of, of I don't, cherry is not the right word. There's a note that approaches cherry, but it doesn't come through with cherry. Well, let's taste it and see what we get. It does have some nice legs. It is pretty oily. I'll give it that. Let's taste it. Uh, 
Um, okay. It doesn't say on the bottle. Let's see if it says over here. No, that's just the uh, the blood oath thing. Um, this is 49% alcohol, 49.3% alcohol, 98.6 proof. It doesn't say where these three different bourbons came from. It says bottled for Lux Row, Bardstown, blah, blah. Doesn't say. It doesn't say for sure that this is all Lux Row. On the palate, I'm getting a hint of Dickel. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe that's not a thing. But. Maybe it's not Dickel. Maybe it's just the, the Sauterne casks. There's an earthy, herbal note that is not one of my favorite notes. Hmm. Yeah, that the peanut butter stays through onto the palate. The I gotta be honest with you guys. And I always try to be honest with you guys on on all of these whiskeys that I drink. If I like them, I'll tell you that I like them. If I am not impressed, I will tell you that I'm not in love with that and I'll have to revisit it. As of right now, I am not in love with this. And that's making me sad, but it's making me glad that this one's not mine. <laughs> I, got the, I got this one for somebody else, uh, for a friend of mine who can't find it anywhere. And I found these at retail. So, so this one's not mine and I'm glad for that. This is not up my alley. This might be your favorite thing. No hate whatsoever. You might love whiskeys that I hate, like Dickel. I do not like Dickel. I like some barrel stuff, even though there's some Dickel in that. But I'm not a fan of Dickel. I'm not a fan of certain whiskeys. And if you love them, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I might make fun of you a little bit, but there's nothing wrong with that. This, as of right now, unless this opens up immensely and becomes way better, this is probably of the blood oaths that I've tasted, and I've had four, five, and six. I may have also had three. I can't remember. I may have had three. This is my least favorite so far. That, that note that I'm comparing to Dickel is starting to come through on the nose, which I don't know. It's similar. It's similar to the Dickel note, the Flintstones Dickel note, but it's a little bit different. It might, it might not be Dickel, but it's in the same area, flavor wise, palette wise. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a, you know, see, I, I, I don't script these videos. I have no plan going into a video of what I'm going to say. I just push play on the, on the camera and get in front of the camera and start drinking and talking. And, and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to love a whiskey. I don't know if I'm going to hate a whiskey. I don't know if I'm going to be just about a whiskey. But I give it to you guys raw and unedited. So there it is. 
Blood Oath Pact 7, Sauterns, partially Sauterns finish, is currently not my cup of tea. I will revisit it. I will definitely be sharing this bottle with my Patreon crew to see what they think of it. And I will definitely be comparing this to the other, to two, at least two other Blood Oaths to see what we think of it compared to them. But as of right now, not love it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a great day.